It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's talk about what are these four financial mistakes and how can you equip yourself to know if you start feeling like you want to move in this direction, you can avoid. And the first one is probably no surprise, but I think it's going to hit close to home for a lot of folks is going to cash. By the way, this is an interesting one to bring up because everybody who's done this, they're like, wait a minute, I thought this show was the mistakes mm-hmm. we saw. And right now you're feeling pretty Ooh, good about yourself. pretty good for me. Because, but I'm telling you, if we fast forward five years in the future, you're going to look back and go, wait a minute, why uh-huh. was I in cash? Because it is right now a very prideful moment that everybody who's in cash is probably feeling really good about the fact that all asset classes, yep. it doesn't matter even what's perceived as safe like bonds, They've been struggling because of the rising interest rate environment. Stocks obviously have the volatility of a bear market. You're feeling really good if you did go to cash. And you may be asking this question, like, are people really doing this? Well, the answer is yes. If you look at current cash levels, levels of cash on the sidelines right now, we have just recently reached the same peak that we saw during the Great Recession. So the level of fear and fright that is present inside of investors is very similar to what we saw back in the 2008-2009 downturn. Yeah, it's one of those things where, and and I'll base this off of the dot-com bubble, Mm because I've been managing money since the 90s, is that Fidelity a long time ago had this great illustration and hadn't been able to go track it down where they actually showed where cash levels yep. were versus the S&P 500. And it's amazing how from a behavioral standpoint, the hoarding to safety of the cash, the feeling, the perceived feeling of safety is actually the peak financial opportunity Mm -hmm. when people should be thinking about diversifying into equities because of that long-term opportunity. Now, you may be asking the question, okay, guys, I don't understand. Why is this bad? I mean, you've already noted all major asset classes are down this year. So if I were in cash, I'm actually doing better. What we are in this unique moment in time, and you say this all the time, Brian, where right now what feels safe is actually risky and scary. And what feels risky likely is the safer place to be. And here's why we suggest that. Because we know that when markets turn, when the financial uh, markets do recover, it often happens very quickly and it often happens very aggressively. Uh, we put again, we have this illustration that we show that shows, okay, what if I took $10,000 and I just invested it in the S&P 500 from 1980 all the way through 2021? So we're looking at a 41-year time period of just leaving that money invested. Well, We've heard the saying that compound interest can be the eighth wonder of the world. That $10,000 left alone fully invested over that 41-year period would have turned into almost $1.1 million by the end of 2021. Well, also, I think it's, um, and look, I want to bring it back to this chart, but I think inflation is something that also has made 2022 so unique. And the fact that everybody who's got cash, and look, I love even my own savings are getting close to 3% Mm -hmm. right now. But I also know that inflation is 8 plus percent Mm -hmm. currently. So there's actually a loss of purchasing power over the long term. That's kind of a scary thing. And it's back to what it feels and is perceived as being safe actually in the long term could be risky. Because I do know, talking about investment assets, the the spread, pretty much the same period of time, 1980 all the way through Mm -hmm. 2021, the spread between inflation and and rate of return, meaning after inflation, mm-hmm. was around 8.9% from, from some of the research we've done in other yep. shows. Purchasing power is still preser- preserved by being an investor as well as your long-term performance, but you can't miss those key days. That's exactly right. The way that you get that 8% plus real rate of return is you actually have to be in the market. Because look at this. If you just missed... The five best trading days in that 41-year period, 41 years of data, you just missed five days. Instead of ending with $1.1 million, you actually only end with about $676,000. If you miss the 10 best days, that number drops to $487,000. The 30 best days, only $176,000. And if you miss the 50 best days... In that 41-year period, your $10,000, instead of turning into $1.1 million, would only turn into $78,000. Well, we know you can't choose when the best days are or when the worst days sure. are. So the best thing to do is kind of just drive through it, always be buying. 